Hey, I'm Jack, and welcome back to Vaporcore. Today, we're gonna have a look at the Aspire Skystar Revo Kit. It's a full kit with a 210 watt touchscreen mod, just with the one single button on the front there. A tank with the most unique coils and filling system that I have seen in a long time. Holds two 18650 batteries, which is the standard that you'd really expect, and just a really, really comfortable shape and size to use. So, let's open it up and have a look down close. So, here we are guys, up close with the device itself. This is the box it will come to you in. It's got a picture of the device on the front with all the warnings and that stuff. Plain black, plain black. Aspire branding on the bottom as well as the contents of the box on the top. Which you can pause that and have a read through if you want to. So the little sleeve will just slide off and it's a plain black box for everything else. Perfect. So when you slide the top of the box off, you will notice the device will be sitting on top for you. This one is the black carbon fiber finish. Um, comes with a little screen protector as well, so you keep any little scuffs off it. Under the little insert, just dig that out. You get some other bits. So you get a little card telling you about battery safety and what batteries would be good to use in that. Something that I'd recommend that everyone pays attention to when they're using batteries, just to keep you safe and also to give you the best performance as well using good batteries. A user manual printed in a whole load of different languages so wherever you're from in the world they're using the same one warranty card from Aspire so all your information regarding that is on there and all the sensors as well then just some advice as well so as well as the mod and all the instructions and paperwork you will get the tank itself which bear in mind this is a full kit, you would hope you'd get a tank with it. Uh, so three adjustable air slots as you saw when I was spinning it around. Nice and wide generous airflow, uh, fully adjustable as you would expect. So all the way closed, all the way open or anywhere in between. And whatever happens to one will happen all the way around also. Uh, the juice reservoir is actually in the bottom here. So that's like a little two mil tank underneath, so it complies with all the TPD regulations and such. Uh, the way this tank is filled is really, really great as well. So again, when we show you that in a second, you'll see. 510 pin on the bottom, all that standard sort of stuff with Revo and some Aspire branding on there too. And on the top, really, really wide board drip tip there as well. Which you can see in the center, there's like a little post in there, which is something that we will highlight in a second. So to put the tank back together as if we were filling it, you want the whole top part. This little piece is threaded so it just twists on and off very easily. Uh, you want to have that little cap piece removed from here before you install the coil. Uh, just because that's actually what holds the coil in place. So as you can see, we touched on it earlier. If I can get this to focus. The actual coil head itself is completely flat. You see it's got sort of like little, um, like a little pattern in there. So basically the wider and flatter surface area is made um, and meant to improve the flavour. Because the wider the surface area, it's made to give you better flavour. And um, that's why Clapton coils in general give you flavour than a uh, round wire um, building an RDA or an RTA. And that's why a lot of companies now are using a Clapton coil or some sort of complex wire um, in comparison to just the standard round wire. Boosts the flavour for you slightly. So that little piece literally just slides onto the top. Little o-ring just presses in. As you can see, this sits all nice and flush. And how you change it, you just grab that little piece and it pulls off. So very, very, very easy. That's how you change the coil, so super simple. Again, you can see it sort of sits up a little bit, and as you give it a push down. Don't have to be too aggressive with it, it's just a little o-ring that holds it in. And then this little piece just twists on. Uh, you want the fatter side to go up. Just twists down. And then that's how the coil will actually be held in place. Top cap will just twist on there now with the airflow control section. So. You've probably noticed that I've got the tank fully assembled and I've not filled the, co uh, filled the tank or primed the coil yet. This is probably the best part about this tank, that to actually fill it up, if you look straight down the center, you can see that little um, post in the center has a hole in it. Now, to fill up the tank, if I just grab something to press it down so you can see, it's got a little pair of scissors to press it. If you look straight down the center, that little center pin is slightly springy. So when you're actually filling up um, the tank, you don't have to twist anything off or open it. 
This is probably the best filling way that I've ever seen. Super, super easy. It doesn't matter what sort of bottle you're using, what size bottle, if it's a 60ml or a 10ml unicorn bottle, or if it's gonna be like a pipette dropper bottle. So to fill the tank, you can see the little post in the center. What you do is get your juice ready. Using Harambe by 12 Monkeys, as I mentioned earlier. and then push it onto that little center sort of post. Press it down and squeeze your juice in. As you can see, the juice will fill up in that little reservoir at the bottom, very, very similar to how an RDTA actually functions. So give me two seconds and I'll fill this up and then I'll tell you how to prime the coil and such. Now tank full up. Uh, you notice I didn't actually prime the coil in the traditional way where you sort of drop a little bit of juice on and let it soak up. Best way and the way that's actually recommended to do with these is just turn the tank upside down for a very short amount of time. So leave it upside down for about a minute because that way all the juice will just go onto the cotton and soak in naturally that way. Uh, we have tried priming it in the regular sort of way where you just drop a little bit of juice on and we got a lot of spit back. So the way they recommend to do this, it actually has a reason. It's not just them saying, hey, we've got a different coil, so do this differently. It's actually a functional thing. So there's one piece of advice that I would definitely, definitely listen to because spit back, it's not fun. So when you fill it up to prime the coil, just tip it upside down and leave it for a little bit to soak in. So time to have a quick look at the mod itself. As I mentioned when I took it out of the box, it is the black and carbon fiber color. See, big screen here and no obvious sort of button. The only single button on this device is up here, as you can see. That would be the fire button and the button you press to get into the menu and lock the device as well. A uh, micro USB charging port at the bottom there. Nothing on the bottom apart from just some branding. No buttons on the sides either way. And on the top, just have a centered 510 pin, which I am a big fan of. Wish more companies would center their 510 pins just so you can get bigger tanks on them. Like I happen to use a 25 millimeter RDA and some um, on a lot of mods it does overhang a bit. Whereas with this, I've tested it and it looks absolutely flawless as well. Fits nice and flush. Another nice detail they've included is also an A around the 510 pin. Just something different that a lot of companies try to do, but Aspire have gone with the A for Aspire. Face is a nice little touch, something that I noticed when I took it out, I was like, oh, that's really cool. So something I thought I'd flag up for you guys. So once the device is on, there's a couple of basic functions that most devices do have, which is five clicks to lock and unlock the device. One, two, three, four, five. You can see it'll say locked. And then one, two, three, four, five presses again. If I pressed it the right amount of times, you can see it's unlocked. And on the display, again, very standard sorts of things. So you've got the wattage, the ohm resistance of the coil when you have one attached, uh, the amount of amps been drawn from the battery as well as the voltage, uh, puff sort of timer on the side here, as well as your battery levels there, two battery displays for the two separate batteries, which I am a fan of once again. So because it's a touchscreen, there are certain sort of gestures in a way that you have to do to get into certain menus. So to adjust the power, you swipe up twice. So from the bottom of the screen up, so you go like that, and you can get into the power adjustment up, down. Touchscreen is very responsive as well. That was a problem with some of the very early um, touchscreen devices that you'd be standing there like pressing it twice or swiping or whatever and it wouldn't register and it'd get very frustrating. But as soon as I knew what I was doing with this device, I'd say, oh, okay, I'm doing this, instantly responded, which I'm a big fan of. So as you can see, you can go into here, you can go up, down, or if you tap on there, you can change it to hard, soft, or normal uh, power mode, so it'll give you a bit of a quicker or slower ramp up time depending on what you're after. And then swiping from the top down twice will get you into the menu system. So you've got your modes, data, system, time, and about. So going into modes, this is where you can choose wattage, voltage, bypass, and temperature control modes. Temperature control modes, you can see you've got the standard ones, so nickel, titanium, stainless steel, and M1, 2, and 3. Going back into the menu, on data, you've got different TCRs. You can have a preheat set, um, setting as well, as well as curves. System is just sort of your general settings, so the brightness and the watch time and things like that. And then time setting, which is for the clock when sort of the screen's on standby. So very good, you can actually adjust it. And this shows you the precision of the screen also as well. You can see I'm tapping on certain things and it's registering very, very accurately. So say, oh, I need to change the day. You can see switches instantly. So there's no worries about the screen being um, not responsive. It's absolutely fantastic. 
Final few bits about this device, swiping up, you can see it will go all the way up to 210 watts. And again, the same function as many other devices. If you hold it down, it will scroll faster, or you can just do whole watt increments if you tap. And so again, it goes all the way down to 5 watts, so if you're using like a very, very high resistance clear, you could probably get away with using that. I'm going to set this to 75 because that's what I'm going to be running the Revo tank with. And we'll put the tank, to the whole kit together, should I say, and see how it performs. So, we've had a look at the device up close, and as always, it's time for the pros and cons. Um, overall view of this device is something that I've really enjoyed using. Um, these sort of style kits, there's quite a few in the same sort of range with like 200 odd watts, a sub ohm tank that you're running pretty decent high power with. Um, this is one that genuinely does stand out to me. Um, I've not really been massively taken in by touchscreen devices before, but this one genuinely does really work well. I found as soon as I knew what I was doing, it's just sort of like, cool, so I just swipe this way for this, and very responsive, very snappy. Um, no sort of like 10 attempts, like just, just rubbing the screen to try and get it to work, which I've had with other ones, unfortunately. Uh, this is very responsive. Um, and the tank as well, I was kind of like, something new, but it, is it just going to be another coil head? Whereas with this, I found... The first pro that I will say about this is the coil heads had no breaking time whatsoever. Filled the tank up as you saw, just turned it upside down for a minute or two, and straight away, put on about 70 watts. Perfect, straight away. I'm currently running it at about 90, that's why I'm enjoying it. Put it in there at about 70 watts, and there was no breaking time whatsoever. Uh, filled it up with Harambe from 12 Monkeys, and we get all the citrusy notes, the guava notes, all blend together nicely, but they're very still separated. So you get like a nice full flavour from them, which I'm a big, big fan of. Um, flavour is absolutely fantastic from these coils. Um, it's not just marketing, they genuinely are really, really good. Um, the flat surface area of them really do give you a full flavour. Um, that's very similar to the like Clapton coils versus a round wire. Uh, the wider surface area does give you a better flavour. And this is kind of just like the next step of it. It's a completely flat coil head. It literally is the whole interior size there, as you saw up close. But it's something that I genuinely have really, really enjoyed. That's the pros about the tank. Uh, about the mod itself, um, the shape of it is absolutely wonderful. And the simplicity of just the one button keeps the device looking really, really clean and easy to use and navigate. Size-wise, the nice rounded sides with that sort of like soap bar kind of shape, as I sort of call it, just fits in the hand perfectly. Doesn't matter how you hold it. You can hold it this way and thumb fire, hold it that way and finger fire it. Whatever feels comfortable for you, due to the rounded shape, fits in everyone's hand. So very quickly, there are only two cons that I've really found with this device. One is something that I just feel needs to just be flagged up and something to be aware of. And the other one is something that it needs to be there, I think. Which is, there's no recommended wattage written on the coils. It just is that plain metal finish with the cotton. Um, I think that's something that needs to be there, personally. Because, um, more so for devices that have several coil head options you see, oh, okay, well this one runs 40 to 60 watts and this one is this to this. So you know, if you wanted something that you have to run a lower wattage, you'd know what it is. With this, I put it in and it read as, this one reads as a 0.13. And that's all I got as a reference. I didn't really know what sort of wattage to run. So that's why when I put it at 70, I was like, no, oh, this needs more straight away. I'm currently running it at 90 and that seems to be fine, but um, that's something that I think Aspire need to have. It's something that I'm not sure as to why that was something that was skipped. That's pretty much the first thing that I do when I get coils in or when we get new stock in, is I'll see, okay, what, who would I recommend this tank to and for what reasons? Someone says, oh, I want something really I can run quite high power through, give me a lot of vapour. I, I don't know, sort of thing. When I'm looking at this, um, just from the resistance, I know you can run good power through it. But that's something that Aspire, I feel they need to add to it. It's not on the coil heads and it's something that should be there personally. Only other thing that I found is the touchscreen might be a little bit of a learning curve. Um, to me, it's not make or break. I think it's the best touchscreen device that I've encountered personally. I've used others where I'm sitting there and I'm poking the screen, I'm swiping up, and I'm swiping down, left to right, and I'm, I just look crazy just stroking this device rapidly. Whereas with this, it literally is, you swipe down from the top twice, it will do this, as it says. Swipe up from the bottom twice, it does as it says. Um, the most responsive touchscreen that I've come across on a device and it genuinely makes it a really easy device to use. And the experience top to bottom was absolutely fantastic. 
Last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to give you a try and put it into words how good I feel the flavour is on this. So let's give this a try. It's fantastic. <laughs> There's no way around it. The flavour genuinely is absolutely bang on with this. Nice and saturated. Airflow is really, really smooth as well. Mod gives more than enough power. Can pick out all the notes in the juice. You can taste the citrus and the guava and they blend nicely, but they're still separate enough. So overall, this is a tank that I'd really say for someone just wants a complete sort of tank. They don't just want clouds or just want flavor. It's something that you want good amounts of vapor, but you want something that you can actually taste the juice as well. So if you are interested in the device and this kit, the tank or whichever part of it, it's available in all of our stores, so you can come in and have a look. As well as our website on vaporcore.com. Comes in a whole different bunch of colours, which will be available online and in store. So, check it out, and we will see you very soon, guys. Thank you for watching.